Good afternoon, everyone. We'll get started soon. In the meantime, we'll have some of our panelists added. And then, hey, James, are you there? I sent a message to you on Skype. I just received the hello message. That's all I received. I don't know if that. So we'll go ahead and get started. I'd like to let everyone know of uh, some of the updates that we have. Uh, we're trying out some new things with the Menti. So if everybody could go on to their computers or their cell phones, I normally don't vote, but I do do some of the fun questions. Um, go to menti.com, type in the code 487794 before we get started. So we will be using Menti to, there's a, I can't really show here. Let me just show you guys on what it would look like for you guys. So if you just go to menti.com, um, you type in the code 487794. So this is what we will be using today for any type of questions. So if you have any questions that you would like to ask, you can include them here. Uh, we've also added this new thing, which is called comment. So these do not get saved at all. And then I'll show you what they look like. But yeah, you can see that I put the little emoji there. They're just for fun. You don't have to use them if you don't want to. Um, I'm hoping to make it this today. All right, so we will be using Menti for questions. Uh, if you do decide to use WebEx for any reason for questions, we will post them into the Menti first. Um, when you're using Menti for questions, if there is a question, you can always kind of uh, like the question. And then if you like the question, we'll answer those first. So we do appreciate following along on the Menti. And then James, could you share a link to today's presentation? Or here, I'll, I'll share a link to everybody right now. So to find today's presentation, you can go into ServiceNow. Um, so ServiceNow looks like this. You just click the end user resources. And it's this first one, the Go Live Town Hall presentation, July 7th. So you can find it right here, the PDF. And then I'm responding to this question with a link for everybody to, to get using WebEx. Hey, James, uh, when you get a chance, can you make Nick a panelist as well? 
Okay, so hopefully this answers any of your questions about how to find the presentation for today. We'll go ahead and get started. So, welcome. Uh, we went live last Wednesday for our July 2020 um, SEO STO release. This is the big one where we went live with the full uh, SEO STO integrated solution, specifically with mostly SEO functionality, some STO control functionality, which doesn't impact departments. And then for today, a lot of the content that we're going to go over is a little bit of a rehash of some things that we've already covered uh, in case there's not more questions. And then we'll cover some communications that we've seen um, that have gone out just to overview them and review them. And then we're going to answer a lot of your questions. I know there's some questions around PFA, some questions around AR catch up. We'll get into all of that. All right, so today on the call, we've uh, brought in some additional folks to answer some questions. So we now have our SEO team um, related to the July release functionality. We have our SEO team related to the production support, uh, whether that be warrants or anything related to remittances. We have our DOF analysts. Uh, these are our Fiscal SMEs. They support a lot of the testing for the new functionality. You can ask them questions about your end close or any other questions you'd like to refer to DOF. Um, there is our group of Fiscal CMO, uh, we've grown. And then we have James Anderson who manages the WebEx for us. All right, so like I was showing you before, uh, we will be using Menti throughout this presentation for either comments or questions. And we recommend you use it directly. All right, everybody, so we're now live. Uh, this is a big goal for us. We've been working really hard for it. I know uh, there was some rumblings that um, what was going to happen is it going to happen, and it did. So it's been pretty successful so far. Uh, we're really excited about it. And if you guys have any initial impressions, if there's things that are working, hopefully, you know, silence, I'm, I'm taking that as things are going smooth. Um, but if you have any questions about things that uh, you're finding or you're not really sure about, you feel free to ask at any time. So if you would like to know what has gone live, I would recommend you refer your people to the July 2020 release infographic. This infographic gives you a high level summary, the summary level of everything that's kind of changed, at least the big key functionality areas. We're gonna get started with uh, any questions that we may already have for Menti. I don't know if we do have any. Um, and then we'll have a fun question. Where is your favorite place to work from home? My boss lives in Tahoe, and so she works outside in this beautiful vista. Very jealous. I only live in, I work in my dining room, so. Okay, so the first question we had is, uh, we'll get started on a few questions. We've already gotten three. Uh, before we get into any of the content, I'll just do a few of them. Three. Hi, everyone. The first question is, if we are no longer using pending cash line 11090100, then what will we be using? I'm not sure who to pass that to, but if this is in context to GL journals, we sent a communication basically outlining, and we have some slides in it too that we'll get to if you have some more questions on it. Um, I'm blanking on if this one is related to PFA or if it's related to just general GL journals, but if this is related to general GL journals, you just don't need to use it. And if it's related to PFA, then you should just follow the PFA um, functionality that we're going to review today.
Anthony, did you have any contexts on the PFA side? Um, so Corey, I think we got this exact question by email and we answered it. Um, mm -hmm. I, I don't remember uh, what it was. Um, but yeah, on the PFA side, um, this um, account is being replaced by um, a new account, 111101. Um, but um, I, I think um, this question probably has more to do with uh, catch up for the prior year. Um, mm -hmm. And it, it will still, 1109-100 will still be available uh, for use 630-2020 and prior uh, accounting date. Okay, thank you. Okay, the next question is, in the previous town hall, you said it's no longer to post pending cash account 1109-100 in this year-end accrual entries and said DOF will provide more info in the year-end training. They didn't mention it. Uh, this is Esther uh, Barbary from DOF, and I'll take that question. Uh, so I know that at the year end, you normally use the 1109-100 to do the pending PFE reclass. So we will no longer use that. The new account that uh, going to be used for the pending PFE reclass will be 1110. So that will be the account that you will be using. However, we have a couple of the options that you can choose. Uh, so our Azure uh, and training team is working on it to update the Power Year and PowerPoint. So please come back and check on the DOG website on the e-learning page for the additional detail information. Okay, thank you. All right, I'm going to get into some of our content because I see some of the questions that we might answer with some slides. Looks like dining room one. So if I go back. And... Oh, actually, home office one. So most people's backyards aren't that exciting, I guess. And who wants to work in the kitchen? I'd be hungry all the time. Okay. So we've gotten some questions already on PFA. So I'll go ahead and go through some PFA content for everyone. So starting um, now, essentially, and anything, I know some departments have already done this, and we have some user support labs set up where well, we can help some departments with the specifics of the ask here. But all PFA activity, until we go live with full functionality, must be processed using the interim process. So let's get into what the interim process actually is. All right, so if you have, I know not all departments have PFA, but if you're a PFA department and your department wants to send any kind of PFA to SCO, there's a slight change in the process. Uh, the, instead of sending the transaction, the PFA transaction request directly to SCO, what you're going to do is you're going to create a FSC ticket. And on that ticket, you are going to attach a scanned copy of the PFA transaction request that you would, that you would have sent to SCO. Um, so that TR, it has to have the wet signature similar to what many of you guys are doing today because, due to the emergency COVID-19 order for electronic signatures. And then you would also need to attach a GL journal spreadsheet upload. So that spreadsheet upload is just an Excel spreadsheet. Uh, that Excel spreadsheet will just have um, the same lines as are included on the paper TR. So the paper TR will be in the SEO legacy. UCM, well, the uh, spreadsheet will have the fiscal chart of accounts. Um, so that'll be, they'll be different, but the same uh, in that sense. And then you just need to submit that and attach that and get that to FSC. You don't need to do any additional work. Uh, if the time comes where the emergency COVID-19 order is lifted prior to full functionality, we'll send out more details um, about how to send those transaction requests by interagency mail. When SEO, or when 
Fiscal receives that ticket. SCO will review the PFA transaction request and all of the documentation in the ticket uh, and make sure that it matches the spreadsheet upload journal so that way they're consistent. If they're not consistent, if there's any questions about it, FSC will respond and let you know. And it'll be on you at that time uh, to respond to the FSC ticket with an update if needed. And then after it's been cleared, um, Fiscal SEO will actually send it up to uh, SEO legacy team for them to process the transaction requests the same way they do today. Um, and then they'll make sure that the spreadsheet upload is loaded into Fiscal. So you do not need to load that spreadsheet upload yourself. Uh, FSC SEO will do it uh, on your behalf. In fact, you will not have access to the ledger, in this case, the PFA submission ledger that you would need to be able to upload that into. And then once the whole process is complete, SEO Fiscal will update the department using the ticket and resolve it. One note is that due to the new steps uh, involved, there might be an additional three business days of processing time. We're going to do our best to minimize that across the board. And we've also got some communications that have either gone out to uh, department liaisons about this or will go out. Um, some of the details here will be updated in the job aid. And that's job aid 440. There's an update that's uh, currently being processed. The whole point of this interim process is we need to make sure that anything that is sent to SDO prior to uh, full functionality is also loaded into Fiscal to keep them in sync. And so I think this is a question that was just kind of asked about the year-end close training. Um, per Esther's answer, this page has been updated. So we recommend you go here for the changes. Uh, Corey, I have mm -hmm. a reminder for the department. Okay. So uh, if the uh, department haven't done so, uh, please go to our website and then you can subscribe uh, to get the email notification whenever we have an update on that page for the fiscal resources page. So you will be informed through the email if you subscribe. So go to the uh, job website, um, fiscal resources and e-learning page uh, at the bottom, that way you can subscribe to get the notification. Thanks, Corey. You're welcome. Okay, so we've got some reminders for your handling. Since it's after July 1st, and this communication was sent out prior to July 1st, um, everything should be dated after July 1st at this point. Um, now, if you're still doing catch up NOB prior to July 1st, that's still allowed. But everything has been restricted, if not a catch up. So this goes back to the next part. NOB is still allowed for fiscal year 2019. It's no longer allowed going forward. These pages should be no longer restricted since we're, uh, it's now July 7th. If you need help with your year-end close, we sent this communication out kind of towards the end of the last month, and so we decided to reiterate it now. There is Fiscal Job Aid 391C, and this is for SEO year-end handling of AR deposits, remittances, and remittance corrections. So this is only for the AR team. Um, the Job Aid provides guidance, you know, from SEO on specific dates and requirements that you need to meet. Uh, there is, like I just referred to, other training that's available for other types of year-end close, um, and including the AR side on the DOF website that we just linked. Um, You'd want to make sure you're accruing all of your open air deposits, you know, during following SAM, you know, as appropriate. And there's a new report that's available, or pardon me, will be available with the goal by July 10th. So if I look at the calendar here, that is by Friday. Um, so on Monday, when you guys come in, you'll be able to access the report, uh, and then you'll be able to use that to get your year in handling of those AR deposits and remittances. Just a general reminder, I'm sure you all are doing this. AR deposits, the non-zero dollar dollars must be linked to a deposit slip or STOJE. 
we have new system check functionality that you might have seen already uh, as of July 1st that validates this. You can still use $0 deposits to do your corrections and so forth as you need to. All right, so the next mentee question we have is what kind of person are you? So for this one, are you a morning lark, an afternoon, or a night owl? I know I'm for sure a night owl. That's an easy vote. I wish I was a morning person. Make life with my kids a little easier. They're always up super early. Hey, uh, James, when you get a chance, can you add Cecilia um, as a panelist as well? All right, let's get into some questions. Looks like it's pretty evenly split between the morning larks and the night owls. And some of us are the afternoon, you know, those post-lunch types. All right, so the next question we have is, we submitted May PFA transaction request letters on June 12th, and they did not get posted. Do we need to follow the interim process for them? Um, so the the plan for um, the uh, PFA TRs that were already sent uh, to SEO and were not processed by year end, um, we'll be working with um, SEO SARD on um, uh, getting the backlog, and we'll be actually our staff will go ahead and uh, post those in the PFA submission ledger. So uh, departments should not need to do anything extra for these. Okay, the next question is what level of detail needs to be provided to SEO for the GL journal upload attached for the PFA? Do we do it to the project and activity level? Um, so um, chart fields like project and activity should be included if um, there are combo edits requiring that. Um, yeah, so um, combo edits uh, still apply to the PFA submission ledger, so we still need to comply with the combo edits. Um, but um, other than that, though, um, the um, the chart field values can be at a, a high level. And I, I saw some uh, more questions in the queue for this, but yeah, uh, basically um, all that we need is kind of um, the SEO level of information. Um, except when, uh, you know, there's some combo edit that we need to uh, meet. Um, but for example, for reporting structure, um, you could just put the SEO 99999 reporting structure. It doesn't have to be a real one since the real one is already there in your uh, modified accrual posting. This is all just for the PFA submission ledger and um, SEO doesn't need that information. Thank you. Next question is, will entries to the PFA submission ledger for estimated PFAs affect the balance in CC probe? Um, so nothing that is um, posted in the PFA submission ledger would affect um, your CC probe or your CC clearing. Um, those would be um, hit when you have your normal budget check for your uh, modified accrual posting. So for example, for estimated PFAs, uh, when you record the GL journal uh, with SEO type ES80 for estimated advanced PFAs, uh, the one with 11N source, um, that's when you would have your normal budget check and your CCO probe impact. Um, and yeah, and for again, for the entries in the PFA submission ledger, um, those actually don't go through the normal budget check. So um, those would not again hit CCO probe. What is replacing NOB? Uh, starting um, July 27th, uh, there will be two new locations uh, available, and they will be for uh, one is CTS for um, sorry, hello. Can you hear me? Yeah, we can hear you. Oh, sorry. So one is for a CTS, for CT, 
S1 transactions, and the other one will be DLC for uh, departmental level transactions. And these are for transactions for uh, payment accounting date um, starting July 1st, 2020. So for any transactions prior to July 1st, 2020, um, departments can still use location NOV. Is this interim PFA process for non-payroll related PFA? Um, so the interim PFA process should be um, basically any time that you're sending over a PFA TR um, to uh, SCO for processing, um, there should be an equivalent entry um, in the new PFA submission ledger. So, um, it, it, I mean, it should apply to all PFAs. Just want to confirm that the electronic signature is considered the wet signature. So um, if, um, my understanding is yes. Basically, if uh, SCO SAR is accepting uh, your electronic signature right now for your TRs, then uh, yes, that will be fine. Um, and that, that would be considered equivalent to wet signature. Thanks. What about PFA letters that were already sent to SCO but were not posted before year end? Will they to follow the interim process or will SCO process as they normally would have? Okay. Uh, so this question was answered earlier, but um, um, we SCO Fiscal and uh, SCO SARD will be coordinating on um, getting these posted in both systems simultaneously. We don't want to add um, extra unnecessary delay by having to go back to the departments and asking for the spreadsheet journal upload. So um, actually, um, our staff are going to be uh, recording the GL journals in the PFA submission ledger for these. So um, departments don't have to do anything extra for the interim process for these. How is TC38 quarterly Smith interest affected? Um, so there should not be any uh, changes to the quarterly Smith interest, um, and I, I believe already quarterly Smith interest um, had had been in, um, interfacing uh, through GL 108 since the November release. So um, there should be no additional changes um, as of the uh, June slash July release. Department is to accrue unremitted receipts to account 1109100 in period 998, fiscal year 2019, and to reverse in period 1, fiscal year 2020. If pending cash account goes away, what account code should we use to reverse the accrual? Uh, this is Esther again, so I will take that uh, question. So first of all, when uh, you said that accrual, year end accrual, you never sh should have been using the cash account 1109100 100 as a accrual because accrual will always have the payable due, uh, receivable due to due from, et cetera. So if you are hitting the 1109100 cash account, that is not the accrual. That's, uh, okay, that, that's the first point. And possibly that what the department is doing here is that they are trying to do some kind of the catch up and they found that reconciliation item after the sum modules are closed. So they're trying to do the cash basis catch up in the GL module. And the intention is that they are going to reverse in next year so that they can fix in the sum module. So from the, uh, for the 2019 year and you, uh, department can no longer do that because if you are trying to correct um, your cash basis transaction, uh, in a GL module, you won't be able to reverse in the next year. So you will live with that transaction in the GL module. So our recommendation uh, at the year end is that you try to reconcile your cash basis before your sub module close. So that way that you don't need to correct everything, you know, anything that you're missing as a reconciling item for the cash basis in GL module. 
basically whatever the SEO process in the tab room for that year, you should have the transaction in the sum module. Thanks. For GL journal spreadsheet upload, interim process, do we include the cash line 1110101 and expenditure line 5390950? Um, yes, that's correct. So um, the account that's used for your expenditure lines, it can be a high level account like this 539950, uh, the one used for SEO interfaces usually. Um, and um, for each fund, you will have to um, include balancing cash lines using this new um, account 1110101. Um, basically, per fund, you should be um, uh, including a, a line for this account, um, just like you would have uh, used 1109100 in the past. So it's just balancing out um, the cash for that fund. Thank you. Next question is, do you have the job aid for replacing the NOB? Oh, I'll take this one. Right now, the replacement to NOB is coming. Um, it, it won't be a direct replacement because it will have less functionality than NOB does. It will not allow you to do certain things. Uh, it's currently being tested. And I was advised to recommend that you wait on all CTS related transactions or deposits and corrections until uh, it's, you know, until the new functionality goes live. And the job aid numbers will be 391A and B. Those are currently being worked on to be updated with the new uh, location codes that you'll need. Thanks, Corey. Um, Trinod, did you want to add anything, or me? Did you want to add anything? Uh, all of that you said is correct. Um, we'll be updating the catch-up sections in uh, Job A 391A and 391B with uh, the new location code that will be available. Thank you, me. For the GL journal upload for the interim process, if there is four entries, the subsequent GL upload will only include four entries. Is that correct? Are we including account codes on upload as well? Okay, uh, so I, I think the previous uh, question about PFA interim process uh, kind of answered this, but um, so th there would be the four user lines uh, that correspond to you know uh, your legacy user lines on your TR, but you would also need to have um, uh, your balancing lines with the account one 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 zero one zero one for each fund that you used. Um, and yes, you should include account codes, but they can be um, just a high level account, uh, such as fifty three ninety nine fifty for your user lines, uh, your expenditure user lines. And um, I do want to mention, since we have gotten so many questions, um, uh, we, we are working on updates to uh, job aid uh, fiscal.440 um, to uh, include more information about the interim process. And um, I believe we have a com that will go out uh, when those updates are made. Thank you, Anthony. Um, we'll be taking a few more questions and then going back to the content. So we'll do two more now. This question is, we submitted our May PFA to SEO for processing on June 15th. They have not processed it yet, so it will be part of PFA reclass in 998. Will we submit our May PFA through the interim PFA process? Okay, uh, so yeah, I think I answered this one before as well, but I, I understand all these questions were submitted probably a while back, but when we're getting them now. But yeah, um, for the, the um, PFA TRs that were sent to SEO at year end, but uh, not processed by 630, um, our team will be working with SEO at home uh, to coordinate um, the posting of these TRs in both systems um, on the same night. So um, departments will not have to do anything extra for the interim PFA process. Uh, basically our team will uh, be helping out to 
uh, handle that part, the fiscal part for these. Hey, Anthony, um, colleagues, uh, let me uh, add the one reminder since there are a lot of the question about the BFA, uh, whether it's going to be the interim or not. So for the year end, uh, the reminder is say, uh, uh, if they are pending PFA, uh, it has a mixed batch. It's before the uh, interim process and after interim process, uh, we recommend department to track it um, for the pending PFA because depending on the whether your pending PFA fall before the interim process or after interim process, and then your uh, PFA reclassification may be different. So just a reminder for the department, if it's possible, track it, your pending PFA. Thanks, Corey. Thank you. Now, Corey, will we be going back to the presentation? It looks like mornings was actually the most popular. A lot of early birds out there. Okay. So I'm going to go through the next content fairly quickly because I think that there's a lot of value in the questions. Um, slide 18 kind of covers the new transaction requests that are coming in through GL 108. Um, slide 19 covers that you no longer need to record advances that's going to be recorded on uh, your behalf by the new functionality. And then there was a question on this already, but uh, Smith transfers, those are going to be automatically recorded. And since they are automatically recorded, there's no need to do catch up for them either. So we're already working on um, how to get access to fund administrators. Uh, so if you're a fund administrator, just be on the lookout for that. All right, so we get a lot of questions on direct transfers. And I've recommended so that some of the direct transfer team actually have there was a suggestion last town hall that we have a separate direct transfer town hall. So I've, I've talked to the Fiscal TV folks about it um, and they're looking into it. There won't be much changing for, there hasn't been much changed from the July release for direct transfers. Uh, that's only related for the document IDs FGS. And what happens is there's a GL journal that posts from GL 108 uh, to record the either expenditure or deposit on the same day. So depending on if you're the build department or the billing department, most departments are just the, the build department. Um, so in this case, DGS will take out money from your department. And when the AP voucher is posted, because there's there can be a delay there between when the GL journal is posted and when the voucher posts, the GL journal is reversed. So that's the only change now. So um, those you will see GL journals come in and be interfaced, and then when the AP version uh, or the AP voucher payment posts, then it'll just reverse out the GL journal. So there really isn't. That means that the implications of that are that. You don't need to make any changes. If you're doing some reclassifications today, you'll keep doing those. Um, you'll keep making sure that your vouchers that are in build air uh, have been posted. You'll work with FSC to facilitate that. So it's essentially no change. It's just something that you should be aware of. All right, so this goes back to what we were saying before. Um, since now with uh, all of the transactions that were identified are now built into the interfaces between fiscal and SEO legacy. We are preventing catch up to prevent double posting. So that's only for accounting dates 7 1 and later. If you have catch up prior to 7 1, you can keep doing so. Um, and so this pre July, that's really referring to the accounting date. Um, there's a new source uh, in GL for reclassification that's REC, and that will typically not workflow unless you're impacting some appropriation, uh, in which case it'll probably be denied because it's not using the right source. Um, in AR, if you are, uh, we're like 
we've already mentioned this before, there's going to be CTS corrections and reclassifications, uh, new location codes coming for those. And then in AP, uh, we've got some job aids covered that it, there's not very much change about it. You can refer to Fiscal uh, 4, I think it's 451. Um, it's all about reclassification in order to understand how to do your reclassification for AP. You'll still be able to use your secondary user ID to disencumber funds. There's no change to that. All right, so then we've also gotten some questions around CVCVAC. Um, so the process of validating that you have enough cash exists today. You might uh, understand those as NSFs. So all that has happened in July um, is we've added some functionality to track uh, the same balances in Fiscal. So most of your departments are set to, in fact, all departments at this time are set to track with, which means that Fiscal is just generating the data about um, your cash balances, and you might see warnings related to that if Fiscal thinks that you do not have enough cash. Uh, if you get a warning that might be a signal, you should check your cash balances in SEO Legacy, which is still the book of record. Um, but there's no process changes for you here. Uh, we are doing a small pilot with a, a select group of departments. So if you're a part of that group, uh, we, we should have already let you know about it. And uh, when we get enough data, we will, I think there's some plan at some point in time to start switching more and more departments to control. And before we do that, before we make any changes, we will make sure to do outreach to you, to have another town hall specifically for you, so you can understand the implications of turning that on in Fiscal. And so if you are seeing any CVCVAC exceptions, you should reach out to FSC as soon as you can. But for the most part, you won't see an exception because you only have warnings. Um, and those might occur because you don't have enough cash or appropriation authority and or, or no budget has been set up yet. Or it, maybe it's just zero dollars. OK, so let's go into some other changes. So unposting has been removed for departments. Um, you'll no longer be able to unpost anything unless it has to do with the CVCVAC exception. So since uh, most departments are set to track with, this won't apply. And we've also, and this has been disabled for a long time, but it kept coming back, disabled the uh, possibility to unpost AR items. You should be you know, following the job aid on how to make AR corrections to AR items using a $0 AR item. So there has been some accounting date changes as well. Um, as part of the cash reclassification process. So uh, just some examples now. So prior to July 1st, so that's any uh, transaction that was, you know, has a, was created prior to July 1st. Um, so that's the, let's call that the creation date. Uh, if it was created on 615, then the cash reclass occurred on 720. Uh, the accounting date would be 615 as the transaction inherited the date from when it was accrued. So that could be, a uh, journal voucher, if you had created a journal voucher on 615, um, then it would still have that date. It's not going to be pushed into this year uh, the way it worked before. And then as of July 1st, that's anything that was created after July 1st. You know, let's say, you know, you created a journal voucher on 715, and then the cash reclass occurred on 720. That new date would be 720 since that's the cash impact. And that's just referring to the accounting date, not the creation date of the transaction. So there, there's multiple dates in Fiscal. So the rest of these slides kind of go over it, how they're switching from inheriting to the current date for all of these transactions. That's journal vouchers, ORF, GL journals, um, you know, customer item, the AR item payments, and then direct journal payments. And so you can go and reference these examples if you have some questions about it, please ask. Not There wasn't a change to everything. There are certain you know, things that, for example, the accounting date is coming from SEO Legacy. Those will retain the accounting date from SEO Legacy. Um, for these, there's no change, and so you don't uh, need to think too much about them. So we've already talked a little bit about the account uh, 
the pending cash account, so I won't say too much more here. So previously, um, departments were creating, you know, GL pending cash lines. So I'll show you the example here. Um, so before you might have had four lines, and then now you really only need to enter these two because the system will create these two. So that should save you guys some work. Uh, the same way, you know, this is for any type of GL journal that you're doing. All right, so then we'll get into some delays uh, in processing replacement warrants. So SEO disbursement's been getting some issues, and I think that uh, this was actually communicated out. So I don't know if it's actually still ongoing, but if it is, uh, please just understand that SEO has a large workload and they're working through it. Adam, did you want have anything to add there? Um, so the, the system um, related issues are kind of been um, addressed for the most part, but it really now, because the SEO disbursements had a backlog, mm -hmm. I don't know where they're at with, with cleaning up that backlog. Okay. Well, as they work through the backlog, um, the processing time will shorten. Yeah, yeah. Once they get all the backlog cleared up, then it should be a quicker okay. uh, turnaround time. Thank you. And the last one before we get into some more questions. Uh, so, Fiscal is rolling forward remaining spending authority on all multi year continuing appropriations. I know that there were some questions about this. Um, if you have a continuous or multi year appropriation, uh, you might, this is work that's currently being done by the commitment control team at Fiscal. And so if you uh, need to, you should request to roll back any kind of budget authority to cover transactions for prior budget period by contacting FSC or opening a ticket in ServiceNow. And then just let them know that this is for commitment control budgets. Okay, so uh, we got through the meat of our content. Um, you know, that was qu really quick, but I wanted to make sure I spent a lot of time on questions with you guys. So I'll go ahead and get into it. Uh, but first, what is your favorite plant or flower? All right, we'll get into some questions while you guys, since we have quite a bit, while you guys answer that one. Okay, the next question is for the GL Journal spreadsheet upload along with the TR. What ledger should we use for the GL Journal upload? Currently, we are using Mod Accrual as a ledger. Um, so the ledger group um, and ledger that should be used our um, PFA submission, uh, PFA underscore S-U-B-M-S-N, um, and the source should be PFN. And um, like I mentioned earlier, we're working on updates to um, Job Aid 440 um, to include this information. Um, but yeah, I mean, if you didn't catch um, uh, this answer, that's fine. You can go ahead and just uh, send in the FSC ticket and we'll work with you to correct the GL Journal upload. Thank you. For daily federal draws, the TR is posted the same day. Will we continue the submission via fax to SEO since the new functionality is three has a three day lag? Um, so it sounds like for this case, um, the um, the fax would need to continue since it's um, kind of expedited processing. But um, if you could drop us an email, uh, let us know which department you are. Um, we, we can uh, work with um, SEO Home uh, to um, work out a business process for this. Thank you. 
If we need to reverse an estimated PFA, which was submitted before June 30th, do we need to follow the interim procedure? Um, yes, uh, you would need to follow the interim procedure. Um, so up until we have the full PFA interface functionality, um, you would need to follow the interim procedure. Um, so anytime there's a TC36 uh, PFA transaction request that's posting in legacy, uh, we do need an equivalent uh, fiscal entry in the PFA submission ledger. Otherwise, uh, your cash in the two systems would be out of sync. Thank you. If accruing and re receipts in period 998, should we be using the general cash 1101000 in the GL? That is correct. Um, so the department will report the, all the unremitted receipts at the year end. Uh, yes, they will need to use that uh, general cash and with the source ACC. Thank you. Can the statewide fund trial balance report be used to account for 1140 slash 1210? fiscal balances for shared funds now that TC29s are being interfaced? If so, what account tree slash node should be used? Okay. Um, so since the um, TC29s are being interfaced in with uh, BU0000, um, I don't believe that any department would be able to use um, existing reports um, to perform the reconciliation. Um, so. Um, like Corey mentioned earlier, we are working on um, a secondary ID access for the fund admins so that um, you can um, view um, the 0000 BU activity. Um, but until then, um, you, you will, of course, uh, still be able to uh, refer to uh, SEO legacy for your um, official book of record balances. Thank you. If SEO did not post the final PFA for reverted appropriations, which were submitted before 615, is SEO going to backdate the entries? How will it be recorded in fiscal? Okay. Um, so I am pretty sure that uh, SEO do doesn't uh, backdate these. Um, so these should be getting processed with a uh, current date after um, SEO uh, finishes their processing. Um, so uh, as far as the um, fiscal equivalent in the PFA submission ledger, um, again, our team would uh, work with SEO home and uh, kind of put in the PFA submission uh, GL journals on the department's behalf um, instead of the department's providing the spreadsheet journal upload for these. Thank you. This question is related to PFA. We submitted our PFA on time, but SEO did not process them yet. Will SEO backdate these transactions? Okay, I think that's the same question as the last one. We have outstanding loans to GF from our fund at year end. We have received repayment of loan in July. Will interface transactions include fund or fund affiliate? How can we verify these in fiscal? Um, so these interface transactions uh, would include, um, yes, uh, fund and fund affiliates. Um, but again, the department users uh, will not be able to view them in fiscal until uh, we uh, set up the secondary ac ID access for the uh, fund administrators to view these. All right, I'll go ahead and show this one. So if you, we both put a link in uh, the, I put a link to the fiscal service now in the Q&A, which is actually the WebEx Q&A. So you can check that. However, you can also just go to the fiscal service now 
Um, and then if you go to your knowledge base here, uh, you'd want to click End User Resources. And so when this loads, it's going to be the go live town hall presentation. So that's the one at the top. So that hopefully you'll be able to find the presentation. The next question is when depositing abatements, we are finding not all are being accepted with the requirement type as abatement. We occasionally have to use other remits and provide an explanation. Will this be fixed? Um, if there is an um, account that the department believes should be included under request type um, abatement, um, the user needs to submit a ticket through FSB and provide that expenditure account and the description. And then the ticket will get assigned to SEO control. And then we will work with um, SEO SARD on reviewing the request. Thank you. Next question is, this is not about PFA, but bond cash transfer. The 621 account was deactivated. What account should we use? I believe these are for bond cash transfers related to AP vouchers. I answered this one. Okay, so thank you. It's not that we, uh, uh, yeah, so it got deactivated, but it is replaced by the uh, other two new accounts. So uh, I believe that there's a one communication that we put the uh, list of the account that was uh, inactivated and then replaced. So you need to refer to that. Yeah, and I believe for bond funds, it would be the 6260000. But um, yeah, definitely refer to that uh, communication. I think we already answered this one. You refer to SEO Legacy as the book of record. However, SEO Legacy, SEO Prod is no longer going to be available as of July 10th. What do we use? Um, so I don't think that this is happening. <laughs> um, <laughs> Yeah, I think SEO prod will still be available. If it's not going to be, we haven't heard about it. Yeah. Um, yeah, if you could maybe drop us an email and let us know where you got that information. That's, yeah, kind of way out there. <laughs> if SEO devil posted a May 2020 PFA TR for fiscal year 1920, how do we make the correction? Do we need to submit through the new fiscal PFA process? Um, okay, so for this one, um, I think uh, maybe uh, if you could drop us an email with uh, more details, uh, let's make sure we uh, work through all the processing correctly. But yeah, uh, please drop an e drop us an email with more details, like the specific SEO JEs and everything. Anthony, um, and can I add a little bit on that? Sure. Mm -hmm. okay, because it's related to a little bit of the GIN. So if we are saying here that um, department book is correct, and then it got duplicate in the SEO record. So you are fixing the SEO legacy and you're not really fixing your book. So that will be the report three item at the GRN. And so it will be just a TR because there's nothing else that should be in the fiscal. So it will be just uh, correcting the SEO legacy and you will be reporting as a report three item at the GRN. Thanks, Anthony. Thank you. For the 2020 July release TC38 loan, since the interface transactions will be loaded under BU000, if there is cross 
fiscal year transaction booked in fiscal year 2019 to 2020 under departmental BU number? How does the system clean out the general fund repayment under a different BU number? Hey, uh, Brianna, sorry, could you read the end of it again? Please? Yeah. Yeah. I'll, I'll repeat the question. Okay. For 2020 July release TC38 loan, since the interface transaction will be loaded under BU000, if there is cross fiscal year transaction booked in fiscal year 2019 to 2020 under departmental BU number, how will the system clean out the general fund repayment under the different BU number? Okay, um, so uh, we may need to treat this as a takeaway, but um, um, my understanding is that there would be an accrual reversal, which would uh, reverse out the um, the uh, fiscal year 2019-2020 entry. Thank you. Next question is, can the unpost voucher be available for the situations following? What if the request is to unpost NFO vouchers? Calculators X EXV voucher related to prepayment applied payment tied to a calculator's SEO payment only. Hey, uh, sorry, Brianna, can we go back to the previous question actually? Um... Yeah, so um, actually, uh, Esther dropped me a note that uh, ledger conversion uh, should be handling that scenario. Um, so Esther, uh, would you like to elaborate on that? Uh, yes. Uh, so can you go back to that uh, question real quick for me? Yeah, I'm, I'm not going to be able to go back to it on the screen. Oh, but... okay. So that's fine. So if we are talking about the cross fiscal year, so uh, my understanding from that uh, question is that uh, you have a FY1920 go post it uh, into the fiscal with the department of BU, right? But then um, the 20, 20, uh, 20, uh, fiscal year 20 transaction, we post it with the statewide BU, but then we don't have to worry about it because whatever the SEO balance is going to be part of the ledger conversion, and it will be started as an SEO balance in the fiscal. So ledger conversion will take care of it. So for the 1920 fiscal year, you will be doing then nothing change, basically. Okay, thank you. I'll read this, reread this question. Can unpost voucher be available for the following situations? What if the request is to unpost NFO vouchers or calculators EXV voucher related to prepayment applied payment tied to a calculator's SEO payment only? Adam, is this a takeaway for us? Yeah, I think this will have to be a takeaway. Okay. We'll make sure we get back to you on this one. Next question is, we have received posted to unclear collection as at June 30th. We made payments to SCO on July 1st. Last year, we accrued the receipt as unremitted cash using GL Journal. How do we accrue without 1109100? I think I have already answered that question. So um, I don't know if you have done the accrual with the 1109100 for the un unremitted receipt, then that is not the right entry. So here is what you are saying that we have received posted to unclear collection. So I'm assuming that you are uh, posting the unclear collection in the CTS fund. So at the year end, if you know that this, you are going to remit it as a revenue in new year, so you are to accrue as an unremitted cash, unremitted deposit. So you're going to do the debit to general cash and the credit to revenue reimbursement or abatement, whatever that you are planning to remit in next year. So again, let me repeat that again. 
If you are hitting the cash account 110900, this is not the accrual. You can only, you should have only put it as 110900 if the SEO is posted at the uh, at the year end. If SEO never posted at the year end, it should not be posted as 110900. Only thing I can tell you is that last year there are a bunch of them because of the accounting date. There are a bunch of the department that um, back it up at 11 or 9, 100. So, for example, you have deposited with the accounting date 620, uh, but it has never remitted to SEO. But in the SEO, it's not cash basis, but in your fiscal system, it's already recorded as a, you already remitted it because it's going to be, uh, it's posted as a debit to 11 cash and then credit to revenue reinvestment abatement. But since now your two books are not synced, so at the year end, what you normally do is that you back out your cash transaction, uh, the deposit transaction. So basically, you are doing the credit to 1109 and then debit to uh, revenue reinvestment abatement. So, I, and this is not that cruel entry. You are just reversing out what system posted for the deposit um, as it is already remitted. In reality, it is not remitted yet. So you should not have that transaction this year. So again, in, in my uh, first answer, previous answer, I answer, uh, I recommend that make sure that you reconcile your cash basis in your sum module before you close your sum module. That means that if it's already deposited in SEO, then the, um, it should be already in your sum module. If it's not in the SEO, you should not have any of the cash basis transaction in your sum module. That's why reconciliation of the sum module is very important this year. Okay, and then Esther, I know that you said that there was some documentation on this. Um, is that available? I believe that will be uh, updated. I will need to check with the uh, and uh, group. Okay, because that, that was a good healthy answer. We'll also publish the Q&A related to it. Okay. So we can send it over to you to use as just content. And we'll also post the Q&A on ServiceNow. What is the purpose of the new DT process? We still have to reclass the transactions to departmental level chart fields. Uh, so the purpose of the um, DT reversal process, and I want to emphasize that this doesn't actually change the existing DT process. Um, it's just bringing in a placeholder um, GL journal through GL 108 that posts um, the same night as the TC 39 does in legacy. Um, so, um, yeah, that that's posted the same night so that we keep uh, legacy and fiscal in sync. Um, that's um, you know the purpose of interfacing it. Now the purpose of the DT reversal is so that uh, once the DT voucher is created through again the existing uh, DGS DT process, um, that you're not double posted. So once the DT uh, voucher is created and posted, uh, we'll automatically reverse out the placeholder GL journal. Um, so yeah, if you're reclassing your, those DT vouchers now, you'll still have to in the future. But the purpose is of this um, whole process is to keep uh, legacy and fiscal in sync. Okay, thank you. Our department records millions of dollars in deposits, including transfers to other departments weekly using the NOB process. We cannot wait three weeks for a replacement code. What should we do? Um, if the department cannot wait until um, the new locations are available, um, they would need to submit a ticket and provide an explanation of uh, their current business process with examples, and then we would review their request to provide an interim solution until um, the locations are available um, on July 27th. Thank you. Will we still be able to use do not route to SEO JV function to reclass direct transfers to, G to DGS post July 1st? Uh, 
Adam, was there any change to the do not route to SCO for JV? Not that I'm aware of. All right, so it sounds like you'll still be able to do the same process, no change to this process. There are rules to that, but. But I think those rules were already there, right, Adam? Yeah, I don't. I don't know if there is a specific change as of seven one. Okay, thank you. Hey, uh, Corey, can that that last mm -hmm. question. Can we uh, take it back and check with prod support if there were any changes? All right, we will. Will CVCVAC cross-reference SCO to determine the true balance? So I think this is referring to um, when departments go control. So I want to reiterate that starting out, the department's majority of them will be track with, which means we will not be stopping uh, tr transactions from processing, even if there's insufficient balance in FISCAL. Uh, however, when we do start setting the majority of the departments to control if a transaction goes into exception because of insufficient balance we will be checking sco because it is still book of record um, to make sure that it's the true balance thank you for replace warrants how can we help the employees who are in financial hardship because of the extra time that sco is taking for replacement warrants I'm not really sure what can be done specifically to, because I mean, the funds are already remitted out. I'm really not sure what can be done in this case. I mean, SEO disbursement is trying to get those out. I'm really not sure what we would be able to do in the meantime in order to speed that up more than Anybody else have any suggestions? But I don't, I don't know of anything other than just trying to to expedite the SEO's processing as much as possible. Okay. And I did get a, a response, an answer about the JV on seven one. Yes, there's no catch up for JVs anymore. So that do not route would go away. Adam, it's it's a little hard to hear you. Oh. Okay, can you hear me? Try and speak a little bit louder. Can you hear me? It's better. Okay, so um, I did get confirmation about the JV do not route. That is going away as of, that went away as July 1st because it's considered a catch up. Okay, um, before we move on to the next question, um, Esther, um, would departments be able to uh, issue departmental checks um, to um, to bridge this gap while they're waiting for the replacement warrant? Oh, I think Esther might have dropped off. <laughs> um, in something of those cases, it would have to be um, coordinated with disbursements to make sure that they don't remail the replacement warrants. Because if the agency reissues and then the SEO sends the replacement warrant out to the payee, the payee would get paid twice. There would have to be some coordination with the department and disbursements persons would have to agree to that process. Okay. Um, should this be a takeaway and we can get um, yeah, we can ask, how we can, disbursements can, does that today with the department? Yeah, yeah. We can follow up and see yeah. if, if there's anything that we can do. Next question is 
post our PFA to TC38 instead of TC36 prior to July 1st, and it interfaces into Fiscal. Does the CTC have an impact if the transaction was coded to the correct appropriations? Um, yeah, I'm going to want to take a look at this. Uh, could you please drop uh, Fiscal, CMO, Fiscal CMO an email and uh, give details like the specific uh, SEO JE numbers and everything? Um, and yeah, we'll, we'll help you out with this. Okay, thank you. The next question for TC38, EO or EOA repayment loan, do they interface and how can we see it in Fiscal? Um, so uh, starting with Ju July 1st, uh, for the, you know, starting with uh, fiscal year 2020, I should say, um, these should all be interfacing in. Um, I don't remember off the top of my hand if these were ones that uh, would post under BU0000. So um, if if they're posting under departmental BU, uh, you would be able to um, see it through your existing um, the ZZ SEO GL108 transactions query. Um, but if not, then um, again, that would have to be something that uh, just the fund admins would see after we um, set up the secondary ID for them to see BU0000. And then uh, you would be able to see it. Thank you. Okay, this is a longer question. Um, for C F A C for June 20th, June 20 was interface and loaded. Is there a way to not interface those transactions? Um, it doesn't serve a purpose to us and I need to reverse all those entries since it all gets charged to miscellaneous revenue. And we treat those as project deposit. Um, could you please provide your thoughts on it? Yep, so um, unfortunately, um, you know, as uh, departments are well aware, um, SEO transacts at a higher level, right? So we don't have uh, the lower level departmental details um, that you made in some cases. So yeah, um, you uh, will have to reclass a lot of these interface transactions. Uh, but the purpose of uh, interfacing them in the first place is to keep uh, legacy and fiscal in sync. And that affects things such as, um, you know, CV, CVAC. So um, it, it's not done for no purpose. There is a purpose, um, but yeah, unfortunately, um, you know, SEO is at a higher level, so we don't have um, all these uh, lower level details. So th that's why the interface transaction is coming at, for example, miscellaneous revenue rather than um, the lower level account. Thank you. If we are posting a journal with accounting date prior to 630, then we can still use the account 11090100, correct? It is correct. However, if departments have an intention to reverse it in the next year, uh, I will suggest not to do so. Thank you. The next question is, when we need to correct an AR item, the only way to correct is to unpost and repost. How do you get a zero deposit to correct an AR? Are you saying we can only change the amount? Will the zero deposit correct the chart fields? Uh, to correct um, AR items, uh, the department should refer to um, job aid 239 for further instructions on how to correct them. Thank you. How about the BCD process? Do we need to file an FSC ticket when we are doing BCT? Okay, so I'm not sure what this question is um, about, but um, let's assume it's about a PFA that have BCT associated. 
um, for those, yeah, um, you should um, create a separate FSC ticket um, per the PFA interface interim process. And um, on that ticket, you'll have um, your PFA TR um, as well as the um, the corresponding spreadsheet journal upload, um, as well as uh, the scan of the uh, BCT TR, so that um, we can forward all of that together to SARD. Okay, thank you. And this looks like it was a repeat. Yeah, okay. Uh, for revenue deposited in the state fund, unearned revenue that needed to be reclassed with the TC3538 for fiscal year 2019, how do we accrue the revenue? Do we debit, debit unearned revenue, credit revenue? That is correct. Thank you. What do the departments do when they cannot change the accounting date on the total control tab in the AR module? The system does not allow you to change the account when a receipt is posted. Um, for this, I think we need further clarification from the department on why they want to change the payment accounting date if they're saying that um, the receipt has already um, posted. But if it has not posted, the department can change the payment accounting date on the regular deposit page after clear, clearing the accounting entries on the create accounting, uh, create accounting entry page. Thank you. And for that specific item, I'd recommend you open up an FSC ticket and then we can have one of our SMEs help out. Okay, the next question is the direct transfers post to GL the same night they post an SEO legacy to keep SEO and Fiscal in sync. Interface GL journals automatically reverse out once related voucher is posted. Can you please expand on this? Um, sure. So um, the timing difference that um, we're talking about would happen most likely if there's um, a voucher build error, right? So. Um, Basically, in those cases, in the past, um, until the voucher build error was uh, corrected, and you know that could take, uh, in some cases, weeks or even months. Uh, for that entire period of time, um, legacy and fiscal were out of sync. Right? It's only after the voucher build error is corrected and then um, uh, the voucher is posted and paid that. Um, uh, it's recorded in both systems, right? So um, the whole point of bringing in the GL journal for the TC39 FGS document is so that um, the the two systems are in sync on day one uh, when the FGS document posts in legacy. Um, and yeah, uh, you know, in the example I just gave, uh, for um, the entire time we're we're in sync uh, rather than you know just catching up and being in sync those months later after the voucher build error is corrected. So um, hopefully that clears up. Um, please feel free to follow up if there's if something more you want to expand on. Thank you. For TC38, fiscal year 19 through 20, EO or EOA, do we need to catch up in fiscal? Um, okay, so um, what I recommend doing here is um, running the ZZ SEO GL 108 transactions query and see if uh, these transactions were brought in. Um, it's it sounds like they may not have been uh, based on the context here. So uh, once you've confirmed that uh, they were not brought in, then for uh, the 1920 fiscal year, uh, yes, uh, you would need to record catch up for these. Thank you. To reverse the GL journal uploaded along with FATR after SEO approved the PFA. Um, no, so um, um, the the 
the GL journal upload would um, only be posted uh, the same night that the PFATR is posted in Legacy, actually. And um, again, the purpose is to keep the two systems in sync. Um, and yeah, th there would be no need to uh, reverse out the GL journal upload. Um, so for anybody that may, may have missed the previous uh, PFA town halls, um, this uh, GL journal upload that we're talking about for the PFA interim process, um, it does not affect um, your processing or your balances in modified accrual. It's a brand new ledger. And um, the entire purpose of this ledger is to uh, kind of track the PFA activity um, separately. So uh, basically it's just um, exactly what is being sent over uh, to SEO on your PFA TRs is uh, what's going to be posted in this uh, PFA submission ledger. Thank you. Has the cash between legacy and fiscal been reconciled for each department? How is CVCVAC affected if the cash balances are not reconciled? So there's a ledger conversion that is going to be taking place, and I believe uh, it's expected to be done around mid-July. And then there's a ledger reconciliation that's going to be taking place. Um, and so we will not set any departments to control until uh, balances are reconciled. Thank you. Is there a template for the PFA GL journal upload? Um, yes, so it, there's actually, um, there, there's, it's called the uh, GL journal spreadsheet upload template, um, and it creates a file that can be uploaded into Fiscal actually. Um, so uh, if you need inform more information about this, you can refer to job aid fiscal.001. Um, so it's a job aid and it also has um, download links for the, uh, the template. Thank you. And was slide 22 in the PDF download? It should have been, but we can double check. <laughs> Referring to slide 31, cash reclass is when the batch process goes through. What is the timeline that the batch goes through? Um, so uh, for the most part, the cash reclass uh, should be um, kind of an overnight scheduled process. Um, the one exception is there is a cash reclass that's scheduled um, at about 4 p.m. before the uh, GL outbound interfaces run. Uh, but for the most part, these will run overnight. Thank you. I, I think this was um, just the tail end of the uh, question earlier about why do we interface transactions if that have to be reclassed. So I, I think that's what it was. Next question is, we can no longer unpost. What is the job aid number for correcting an AR item? Um. So departments no longer have the functionality to unpost AR items. Um, they will have to submit a ticket to request um, to unpost an AR item. So there won't be uh, uh, a job aid for this. Ami, earlier you mentioned how to do a correction on an AR item. I think there was a job aid. Was it 239? Yeah, 239, yeah. Okay. I, can I clarify on this a little bit? So yeah, so if you can, department can no longer uh, post an uh, uh, item if you apply the payment uh, incorrectly to the wrong item. And if it's already interface, you will need to do the um, uh, AR ER remittance correction with a $0 deposit. However, if there is uh, something wrong with the interface, then uh, yes, you can uh, uh, submit the FSC ticket to unpause um, it 
And so that way that your deposit will be opened up and you can correct it because it is not remitted yet. It is because of the interface error. But if your department misapplied it by themselves and its interface is already successful, they need to correct it with a $0 deposit. Thank you. Thank you. And so then um, I just double check the PDF version and it looks like this slide, it's 18 here because we added slides for Menti, but um, slide 22 in the presentation is actually on uh, the PDF version. So I confirm that. Is there a reason the AP accounting date is changeable? Why can't it be defaulted to the current date to prevent it from being changed and create error, especially when it's changed to a prior year date? So I think this was about the cash reclassification accounting date changes. Um, let me actually just open up the slide on that one. So for the items that were not changed, there were no changes to AP payments, interface, uh, AP vouchers, or AP ORF. So those are all inheritance date, and I believe that has to do uh, with the idea that those are coming from SCO Legacy. Uh, Corey, uh, mm -hmm. just stay there. Uh, can you, yes, stay there. Mm -hmm. Previous slide. Can, can you go to the previous slide? OK, I think I can um, put some clarification here. So here in the number, uh, on the example, you know, the uh, number three is a voucher accounting day. Uh, I know it kind of, uh, when you read it, it kind of confusing. We are here only talking about the cash reclass accounting date. Okay, so if, let's say that if you created the voucher with the accounting date 615, okay, your voucher accounting date for the debit credit to the expenditure and then payable will inherit from your voucher accounting date. However, when the cash reclass happen, the cash reclass will happen with the current date, uh, starting July 1st. So we are not here talking about the voucher accounting date. Since the whole topic is about the cash reclass, we are referring to the cash reclass accounting date. I just mm -hmm. want to clarify on here. Thanks. For so, yeah. And then um, just so everyone knows, AP vouchers go through pay cycle. I'm not aware that they go through cash reclass. So this is specifically for the cash reclass um, transactions, which include AP JV and AP ORF. Okay. We can no longer use secondary ID to record direct transfers. Is there an alternative method for recording direct transfers in the AP module without including the GL journal ID reversal? No, there. Okay, uh, I think this one may need to be a takeaway for the AP SMEs from Bosdi. Okay, thank you. Until period closes and send transaction requests to SCO for the difference, actual minus estimate. If we run June 2020 allocation after the PFA review page goes live, do we need to post the June estimated PFA in Fiscal? I will take that, Anthony. So I, I would just say that please look out for the uh, year end entry. If you have an estimated PFA in the fiscal year, uh, 2019, and then uh, it's already whether you uh, you have a PFA review page or not, there will be the one additional entry in addition to your regular PFA class at the year end. So look out for the uh, uh, year end uh, PowerPoint update for the detail. Okay, 
And then uh, just to let everyone know, we finished all of the content. So um, there's just a few reminders and other things about support. Uh, so I'm going to keep going through the questions until we kind of run out of time. Or until we get close to running out of time, and then I'll just kind of close out the session with uh, the remaining slides. And this was a tail end to the previous question. When would you expect to implement the full PFA functionality? Uh, we don't have a firm timeline yet. Um, and yeah, uh, CMO will be giving you more details as we um, get closer to um, having a, a finalized date. Thank you. For ARF vouchers, DGS DTs, bond fund slash F that interfaced in both AP and GL module, can you please expand how the interface GL journals automatically reverse out the related voucher posted? Uh, I'm afraid I'm not really getting this question. Um, okay, so, oh, for, yeah, I'm confused actually, because um, it says ARF and then it mentions DTs. Um, okay, but, but I'll, I'll just uh, go ahead and answer from the DGS DT perspective. Um, so yeah, w once the, um, the, so for, um, this is all kicked off kind of by GO 108, right? Um, and it's bringing in the TC39 FGS documents. Um, and um, when, whenever the um, DT build process for the vouchers um, happens, um, we're checking um, th that the invoice um, was related to a GL 108 journal, uh, you know, with the, um, that, that FGS document um, based on what's there on the uh, DGS DT tables. Um, and so uh, once that happens, uh, we're reversing out the portion of the GL 108 journal that um, uh, was um, associated with that uh, invoice for which the voucher was posted. Okay, thank, thank you. you. What date did CMO send for the new replacement account? for six two one zero 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 zero. I believe that happened on six twenty four, but I can double check. Um Corey, I actually have it open right now. It's com nine thirty six. Um is there mm -hmm. somewhere I can see the date that it was sent? Um Okay, apparently it was July first. It got sent July first. Oh. I got an answer. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Great. Thank you. July first. And this one here. Yeah. Do we still use accounts six two one zero 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 and six five two one zero 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 to reclass bond cash transfer journals? I think I heard you guys say that 6210000 account was deactivated. Esther, do you have uh, an answer for this one? Uh, yes, I'm trying to look for the exact account for them on um, on um, just to be to give the exact account. Let's take it back and then I will get provide the exact account number. Okay. Yeah. Uh, I can skip this question actually. Yeah. Okay. Uh, okay. Let me look at it here. Uh -huh.
for SCO UCM 9812, can we use account 623000 for repayment loan? We might give everyone a second on this question as well. Will this presentation be in Fiscal TV? So we are actively working with Fiscal TV, uh, that team, to integrate our content and eventually integrate town halls with Fiscal TV. Um, there are some advantages to what they do. They have uh, some pretty good people there, and uh, we're looking at ways to shorten the sessions. Although with the Q and A that we get taking most of the time, um, you know, this seems to be the best way for us to do it. Uh, but we'll keep looking at it, and we'll see what content that they want to provide in Fiscal TV. We'll have to work with them on that. When you say the interface journal will reverse itself out when the vouchers are posted, are those vouchers the ones posted by DGS? Yes, that's correct. Mm -hmm. Since direct transfer is auto reclassed in the GL module, do we only need to do to post do we only need to post it in the AP module? Okay, um, sorry, I don't think I'm uh, really getting this question, but um, there, there shouldn't be any auto reclass. It's just getting um, the, the placeholder journal, which is new uh, starting July 1. Um, that is what will be uh, getting automatically reversed in GL. So uh, there should not be other changes to the DT process for departments other than that placeholder journal, which is automatically reversed. So. Um, all the processing that happens in AP, um, it'll happen the same way. And Esther, let me know when you have an answer. Okay, so, uh, uh, Corey, so mm -hmm. the department will have to go to the uh, co-work crosswalk, and, mm -hmm. uh, and there are two types on the co-work crosswalk, and there's a revision history. And then uh, if they uh, click on the revision history, they will see which account are inactivated and replaced by what. So here, what I'm seeing, I can tell you that 621, yes, they said that it is inactivated along with the 622, okay? okay. And then the new account that we established is 626 for the bond proceed transfer to other fund, and then 628 transfer to other fund unspecified. Okay, so those are the replacement uh, uh, account for the original 621 and 622 account. Mm -hmm. And do we have another question about the 65? Can you repeat that question again? Uh, I, think it's I think it was the same question. I it's the same question. question. Okay, so the bottom line is that go to the uh, COA crosswalk. Uh, uh, Excel spreadsheet, and you will see all the COA on the you know red tab. The next step is that there's a revision history, and you will see that what are the changes and why the changes were made, or for what reason. And then for anybody who needs help finding the COA crosswalk, it's on the DOF site at the Fiscal Accounting Resources. You can click Accounting, um, Fiscal Resources for Accounting, and then you can scroll down. And all of these are updated here. There's the communication. That's actually old, um, but the update here is the updated crosswalk. So you see it was updated on 6-25-2020. Did I get that correct, Esther? Yep, okay. you're right. And so if you still have- I, I, I want to add also, uh, I think the first question had, um, like it asked about the 621 and the 6521 account. Mm -hmm. um, so, um, I mean, I, I think that if the, the T account side was 626, then the R, 3 Series R account side should be recorded as 636. Correct, correct. All the but, T um, account will be uh, replaced by the 626 and 628. 
So yeah. ceasefire is more like a transfer in, more like a, a R. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, but uh, I I did have some um, some outstanding questions about um, all of this this change. So um, I'll, I'll be following up on that, and uh, we'll when we send out the Q and A transcript, we'll make sure to um, you know include the updated information. And uh, I think for the question displayed on the screen with the combo error, um, if you could send us an email with more details, uh, we can look into that. Yeah. So please reach out to FSC for this one. Is the department or fiscal slash SCO responsible for the cash reconciliations after the ledger conversion? So the ledger conversion uh, was referring to uh, is for cash. So SCO fiscal will make sure that the beginning balance for SCO and fiscal are in sync. Please clarify again, can we unpost AR items if we have not applied payment to them yet? Or can we not unpost any AR items even if no payment has been applied? Um, departments can no longer unpost any AR items. But um, as Esther mentioned um, earlier, if the department has um, a transaction that did not interface to SEO legacy, um, they can submit a ticket um, to get their um, AR item unposted. Thank you. Was this um, question answered? I think it would have been by the COA crosswalk. I'll let you read it, Bree. Okay. SCO UCM 9812, can we use account 623 for repayment loan? Uh, give me a few minutes on that. Okay, thank you. We have deposits in the bank the last week of June, which we have not remitted to SCO yet. To confirm, we are to accrue these unremitted, unremitted deposits as a debit to general cash 11100. <laughs> Is this a takeaway? Um, the, uh, uh, I guess we would have to take this away. I think this is a, a cool question for um, year end. Uh, I, I get it. Okay, hold on. I'm respond. Okay. Uh, let me see. We have a deposit in the bank last week of June, which we are not. Okay, I can answer that. Hold on. We have a deposit in the bank last week of June, which we had not needed to as you to prove this now. Every digit. Yes, that is correct. That will be the your uh, typical giant accrual uh, for the unremitted cash. You already deposited in the bank, but you want to report to SEO as an unremitted. Um, deposit as a revenue and, re and reimbursement or abatement. So you will be credit to revenue reimbursement and abatement and debit to 1101,000 general cash account. Will AP interfaced into the AP module? Right now we record an AP module and reverse interface transaction. Since 1109100 is no longer allowed, will we not be able to reverse the interface transactions? Um, so, no, uh, PIAs will not be interfaced into the AP modules. Uh, for the PIA, it's just going to um, be um, just a GL108 uh, GL journal. Um, as far as uh, recording an AP module, uh, Corey, I think there's a job aid that uh, covers um, GL to AP reclassification, right? 
with a zero dollar voucher, I believe. That is correct, uh, uh, Anthony. So the mm -hmm. department uh, currently have a practice of using the AP module because they need to liquidate the uh, PO. They can do the zero dollar voucher to uh, to liquidate the PO and then reverse it at the same time. So that way that it will not be a uh, double posting. The department should not be reversing any of the interface transaction. Yep, thank you, Lester. And that's job aid uh, 451. I now understand the DSDT process. The other direct transfers, such as DOJ, CalHR, and SCIF, we are going to still reclass in the GL module. Is that right? Um, that's correct. Those will only be uh, GL journals still. Yep. Thank you. It, next question is on July 3rd, there were two interfund loan JEs, one for fiscal year 2021, which is a new loan, which was interfaced departmental BU per GL 108. The other one was loan repay for a fiscal year 1920 loan and didn't interface via GL 108. Do we need to post this one? Okay. Um, so, um, uh, Please send us uh, an email so with the specific um, uh, SEO JE information so we can take a look. But um, based on uh, what you've described here, um, I believe that um, the the twenty slash twenty one uh, fiscal year uh, loan, um, if it posted under departmental BU, then it must not be um, a loan that's uh, part of general fund borrowing. Because only general fund borrowing is uh, being posted under BU zero 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 zero, and for the loan repay, um, so it, assuming that all of this uh, came in with transaction date, um, you know, after July first, um, the the reason why you don't see the loan repay for the prior year loan must be because um, it was a general fund loan. But um, yeah, if, if you could send us an email with more information, we can uh, confirm that. Thank you. Can you please explain how can the department remit amount from uncleared collection CTC fund to a cheated revenue account? Amount for the cheated general cash checks were posted to uncleared collection by fiscal per the job aid process. Um, we are working on a, a new request type that is pending SEO SARD uh, approval. And we also understand that uh, the department will not have the original uh, deposit information available to provide on the DDD. Um, but in the meantime, the department will need to contact SEO SARD for um, an interim business uh, process. Were we able to get an answer for this one? Uh, so for the loan repayment, uh, so they can record it with a 623000 account. However, whether it directly cross to the 9812, that would be the question for the SEO uh, hall, because uh, most of the 9812 is not really cross to specific individual uh, six account. Okay, so then we'll take that one away. Yeah, let's let's take that one away, and then I need to look at the, how the tree rolled it up for that account into the UCM. Mm -hmm. The next question is, why do the account codes keep changing with all the other complications going on? Nick, is this you? I'm actually not sure. No, I don't think so. Yeah. Uh, so what I could tell you is that 
a lot of these changes are connected. So some of um, the changes might have required account code changes, but uh, we can give, I'm trying to think. Other than that, we'll just have to take this one away um, to see what we can come up with for an answer here. This looks yeah. like tail end of a previous question. Yeah, can we like, can you increase the the maximum uh, character count in Menti or anything? <laughs> uh, I don't think I can. We yeah. can take a look to see if we can. I'd recommend shortening words like interface um, to make space if we can't in the meantime. Can you please give us more information on the placement account placement for account 621? It's, uh, hold on, my computer can trace here. Oh, one second, okay. So the 621, 62, hold on, hold on. I say. I'll give you a second, Esther. Yeah, just give me we'll a go, second. We'll go on to the next question. Sure, thanks. Skiff direct transfer interface with GL108. Can we reverse the interface transaction in the GL module and post an AP with secondary IT with transaction type as AP voucher and origin as manual? Um, okay, so um, I mean, I, I think the uh, recommended best, best practice would be the one that we uh, lay out in fiscal.451 with the $0 voucher rather than reversing out the uh, interface transaction in the GL module, which, um, I mean, you wouldn't be able to do that um, for this fiscal year anyway, since um, departments can't touch the pending cash anymore. So, so Corey, I have an answer. Uh, so basically the same answer, uh, 621 and 622, are uh, inactivated now, and mm -hmm. it will be replaced by the count 626000 for the bond proceed transfer and 628000 for the other transfer unspecified. So please look at the core crosswalk on the revision history tab. Thank you. Other than the DGS direct transfers that interfaced, what are the other interface AP transactions that will be reversed out in the GL module? Um, so we, we have three um, similar uh, processes to the uh, DGS DT reversal. So there's the calculators reversal, uh, which um, I believe went live June uh, 2019. Um, and then there was the um, ARF um the r process which uh, went live in march of this year 2020 um, and then yeah dt is the last one so uh just those three since we cannot unpost any ar that was set up and posted can we still reverse an incorrect ar by reversing the entry and close the time Um, I think this will have to be a takeaway question. I think this is and this was a part of the previous question that was already answered. Mm -hmm. Did you answer the question about what account to use for bond cash transfer? I didn't hear. Both 626 and 636 are giving combo errors. So 62, uh, okay, so it will be the 626 when you set the combo error, and uh, you might need to put the fun, uh, fun and uh, affiliate and fun affiliate. I'm not sure what combo error, error that we are referring to here. 
This might be one that you'll need to reach out to FSC for. Thank you. And I just want to remind that these new accounts, I, but we need to confirm that this is, a, um, I think it is a, based on the account and date, uh, not, the, uh, not the transaction date. Thanks, Esther. Okay. Thank you. To record non-interface GL journals, will we offset the expense with 1110100 instead of 1109100? Um, okay, so I think we're going to need details on uh, what kind of GL journals you're recording. Um, if it's a PFA-related GL journal, um, so that's, uh, you know, your estimated PFAs or your PFA corrections or your care, uh, manual allocations, then, um, you should balance by fund with, uh, 1110101. Um, but yeah, for the question as asked, um, I, I don't think that, uh, this is appropriate and, uh, we would need some more details about, uh, what you're trying to do. Okay. Do we still use account 1109100 for fiscal year 2019 to 20 PFA reclass? This account is no longer available after July 1st. How do we reverse the PFA reclass in the new fiscal year? So the answer to this one is a yes, depending on the when you run the PFA transaction allocation on labor, um, your reclass will be either using the 1109100 or, or you will be using the new PFA reclass account. No matter how you re, uh, PFA reclass at the end of the year, the reversal will happen only at the uh, new account, which is uh, 110110. So you will not touch the 1109100 for the PFA reclass reversal. You may have a different, you may need to use a different account at the end of the PFA, I mean, at the end of the fiscal year 2019 for the PFA reclass. However, when you reverse it, you will be using only one, uh, you will be only uh, re uh, reversing from the one count, which is a 110, 1110110. Thank you. Sorry, Esther. Um, maybe I am confused, but isn't it the, the account uh, 1110101? It is for the PFA transaction, yes. Okay. But okay. for the PFA okay. reclass, it's, uh, we're not using this 101, uh, last three digits, the last three digits would be 110. Okay, got it. We tried 66 bond proceed transfer to other funds, but ran into budget check error. So that means that uh, you are using the appropriation that does not have a T, a T, a pro, T account set it up in your commitment control. So check your commitment control and then see if there's uh, any uh, T appropriation uh, set it up. If you don't see it, then uh, send the ticket to FSC. And I, I would recommend uh, sending in an email uh, for this so uh, we can take a look at it. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. If direct transfers have been reclassed, by AP using secondary ID vouchers as a catch up and JV do not route to SCO, and these options are no longer available. Does it mean that the direct transfer can now be reclassed to GL only?
Um, so I don't think that this is the case, but um, yeah, I think we we need to take this away and check with uh, the AP SMEs in Boston. June deposits that are not in the bank until July. Do we need to accrue these and remove deposits? Um, if the deposit date is prior to uh, July 1st, 2020, then the department would need to accrue these at year end if they did not remit to the um, state fund. But then if the deposit date is after, if if it's July 1st, 2020 or after, then they do not need to accrue those. Okay, thank you. So we will need to use the account 626 for all the BCT journals after June 30th. But if I want to reclass journals with journal dates prior to June 30th, um, can I still use 621? Is that correct? That is correct. So we agree then since we have a lot of the question about the 62 account. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to take that all the question and then to put the answer. Uh, you know, like we were, we were thinking about, you know, doing some kind of e-learning for that as well. So we'll give you the more information on that. Okay. Thank you. Is AP going to be able to expedite payments? And if so, when? It depends on um, what uh, you're talking about, but, but mostly the AP expedites where you have like same day, uh, next day, or two days. Um, that won't be happening in fiscal until this date. We don't have the ability to turn those around like same day out of even next day. So I heard that they won't happen until end state. And that's so that's when SEO legacy is retired and all of SEO is in fiscal. Is that correct, Adam? Yes, that is correct. Okay. Thank you. The recommendation for direct transfer only town hall. Thank you. When we reverse your N one entry, can we still use account one one zero nine one zero zero? I think we already answered this one. If we are reversing it uh, in New Year, you should not be uh, you should not be using any of the eleven or nine one hundred card at the year end. So I can um, we answered it again. If you have an intention to reverse the transaction that has eleven or nine one hundred, please stop and rethink why you are using the eleven or nine one hundred card at the year end. So you won't be able to reverse it unless you send a ticket for the some exceptional cases. Thank you. Can we start using the replacement of 620 and 6521 starting year 2021 or July 1st, 2020? I do believe that this is based on the accounting date, July 1st, 2020, but I need to um, double check on that. Again, like I say that we're going, we are going to put some um, guide together for the usage of the 6-2 account for everyone, since we have a tons of questions about that, okay? Thank you. What are the fiscal accounts for legacy 0213600 and zero two one three nine zero zero. Is this one where they would refer to the COA crosswalk? Yeah, they, they should refer yeah. to the COA crosswalk for this one, Corey. For okay. on uh, finances website. Yep.
about the BCT account 6511000 and appropriate transfers to other funds worked. Is this okay to use? Yes, it will not stop them for not for using that. However, uh, we need to check how this account is routed up to the UCM at the end of the year. Again, we will compile all these six six, uh, six account questions and then get back to the department. Thank you. Is there a way to clear an AR item ID when SEO processes an offset? Currently, when SEO processes an offset, the TC38 is interfaced with GL108. We reverse this entry and key to AR module with NOB. Uh, for this, the, the department would have to wait for um, the new location that will be available um, on July 27th. Regarding budget or error for DJ, the short name listed error, what does that mean? Is there any resource we can check or do we have to submit a FSC ticket? I'm, I think DJ would be AR, but. Okay, Query, I will answer that. Uh, so I don't think that you will be able to see what kind of budget error is from the AR module. So you will need to go to the Comimac Control Budget Exception page and then uh, filter out the, uh, the, the direct journal type you know, commitment control type, and then look for the document ID, and then you will see that what is the error about. So this is more on the commitment control page rather than on the AR module page. Okay, thank you. Effective July 1st, what transaction type do we use in our journal entry? The transaction does not need to be routed to SEO. Um, <clears throat> department will use REC uh, for reclassification, and there are other um, journal search types that are already in place that um, do not route SEO, so we'll choose from the list. But the only new change for July is going to be the REC, that's for majorly for reclassification within the department. Thank you. Is job aid? Fiscal 440 still pending. Did anyone have trouble opening? Is there a complete example of how to prepare PFA transfers when there was an estimate? So job aid 440 is available on ServiceNow. Um, if you're having trouble with it, please contact fiscal.cmo at fiscal.ca.gov. And we can probably just send you a copy and And then I believe uh, prepping the PFA transfer for an estimate is there. Anthony, can uh, you maybe provide a little bit of context there? Um, so uh, yeah, I, I think we uh, detailed the um, the complete uh, flow of the uh, PFA estimate process mm -hmm. um, in that job aid. Um, but yeah, I, I wanted to mention that we are working on some updates to this job aid uh, to give more details about the interim process as well. Mm -hmm. So there is a version there, it has the details, and then we'll be adding more to it over time, especially as we approach the full functionality. When can we use 110102 account, accrual account, non-PFA allocation? Can you provide an example? 
Um, so Esther, uh, please correct yes. me if I'm wrong, but I, I don't think that there's a reason for a department to manually uh, use this account. Um, I think the, the intention was um, this is going to be um, used in your allocation steps, which were identified as uh, not uh, PFA related um, during the BP45 testing. Um, so for for those, um, the balancing line is uh, this one 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 zero one zero two account rather than the one 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 zero one zero one. But yeah, I, I don't think there's any reason for a department to um, use this themselves manually. You are correct, Anthony. Yes, department um, yeah does not need to use this account for ever. This is only the uh, at the allocation that system um, generated uh, system uh, put it as an offset account for the non PFA transaction. So Corey, I I have a confirmation about the six two account. Okay. Mm -hmm. Um I had to uh I had to connect with the my um UCM as me. So yes yeah, what they said that six two six must be used for all bond cash transfer. For and the uh the activation of the new accounts are affected by the accounting date. So if department are using the transaction with this accounting date for 2020 fiscal year, then you, they need to start using a new account. Again, uh, they, need, they need to be specific about the long cash transfer. It must be the 626 account. But anything that they are doing the catch up for the fiscal year 2019, um, business does not change, it's the same. So they can still use in the old account. So the old county inactivated, but with the effective date with the 7-1-2020 accounting date. All right, thank you. So we're back to our, uh, we've got about 13 minutes left. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and close out the rest of the slides and then we'll just kind of finish out questions through the end of their time. I really dig, uh, you know, all of the, there's a wide variety of flowers I've never even heard of here. And, uh, you know, uh, we, we sit with the BLM movement. And then, of course, there's the cactus. I see the cactus king there. I, I too like the cactus king dancing around on us. <laughs> Ones that I can't kill, oh, that's me. Okay. So uh, I'm going to move this to the next one. The results are hidden here. If you guys can rate the presentation as we go through it, I'm going to finish the actual uh, slides, but you know, you go ahead and give us some ratings now as we close out. Uh, so throughout the month of July, we're pretty much booked up right now and we're looking at how we can expand it if it's if there's a desire. So we've gotten a lot of really good response so far for our user support labs. Uh, we had our first day yesterday. I think that went pretty good. Um, hoping to answer any remaining questions that you guys might have or anything that might be specific to your department in those user support labs. If you would like to have a user support lab, like I said, we're looking at ways to expand this, whether it be uh, to add to it or to continue on past uh, July, depending on how it goes, we'd like to give these to you sooner than later. Um, so we're looking at different options, just keep be on the lookout for that. Uh, go ahead and submit a support lab. You're some of your departments may have already had one or maybe um, are having one soon. So look forward to that. We had a survey question. Uh, this is actually a question that was asked before this meeting. Uh, we always try to give you an opportunity to ask any questions in advance. Um, probably bring this up to the front and future presentations. But the question was, will AP processors be able to search warrants issued in fiscal or submit replacement requests via fiscal? And the answer was, departments should not be requesting replacements using fiscal if there is a need they should be going through sco disbursements as they have in the past in most cases the warrant is missing which is why the replacement is needed in this case the department should be following the regular std 435 stop payment process all right so uh, there's a lot of content that you might need to uh, use as you guys are transacting so we put this page together for pfa in the july release and then there's a whole lot of updates. We've mentioned uh, several of them already, um, you know, 451, 440, et cetera. How to use uh, manual catch-ups now in 7.1. 
So right now, this is our go live town hall. We're planning one more town hall the week of the 20th. Uh, that invite should be going out very shortly if it hasn't already. Um, I believe it's, I won't give you the exact date because I don't remember off the top of my head, but that's the next one. If we see things in user support labs, if we see trends for departments, we'll bring those up then. If we have any new communications to share, we'll bring those up then. And hopefully by then that'll also include content around the catch up for uh, AR, or pardon me, the location codes for AR. If you have any more questions, you can always contact us at fiscal.cmo at fiscal.ca.gov. For any functionality, since we are live, I'd recommend that you send that to FSC. Um, however, if you do send it to fiscal.cmo, we'll try to get it done. It's just not tracked as heavily as FSC. All right, so now we're back on the feedback. We really, we use this feedback a lot actually to make sure we're um, creating good content for you guys. Uh, so please go, please go ahead and rate us directly. So after you do the first one, we'll also ask for feedback um, for the town hall. And so we'll go ahead and I'll give some time to do this one. Uh, it looks like we've got about 43 answers and then I'll move on to the next one for feedback. We've got about eight minutes left, and then we'll keep doing questions until we close out. So if you guys have feedback, we really do appreciate that stuff. All right, Bree. Okay. First question we have is, can we use account 623 for UCM 9812? I have to get back to you on that one because I need to check the tree, load it up, whether that six account is going to load it up to 9812. We will get back to you on that. Will there be a job aid or e-learning available on how to record unremitted deposits as of June 30th? Uh, for this, I would recommend uh, the department to refer to DOS. Uh, year end training, and we also have uh, fiscal job aid 391C available for SEO uh, year end handling of AR deposits and remittances. Thank you. Okay, I'm going to move this over to. Currently, our department uses the AP or AR module to post SEO interface reclass. Do you suggest to use GL module instead? Um, for the AR module, um, it depends on what the department is trying to reclass. So we would need um, specific situations uh, from the department, but uh, most of the time, uh, we suggest to do the reclass in AR if possible. Okay, so thank you. The, uh, um, one thing that I want to add on the AR, so the one comment that uh, interface in the AR module is uh, uh, the federal drawdown, right? Uh, so if you want to avoid the AR, uh, the reclass, what you can do is uh, you can uh, set up the, the receivable and then when the interface come in, the interface will look for that, uh, um, that AR. So if you put it, uh, uh, if you set up the AR item, then you will have a less work to do for the reclass. Would you clarify GL1110101? And one one zero one zero zero. I'm confused on when to use what. Anthony, you want me to answer? Uh, yes, please. <laughs> so, if department. Um, they don't have uh, any of them, uh, the manual allocation, right? If you don't have a manual allocation, 
I don't see the need of using the 101, the last digit 101, because you will have um, this account as an offset from the labor and then PFA allocation. Okay, so if this 101, the last digit 101 is needed only if you have a estimated PFA or if you have a, like a manual PFA transaction, like a manual allocation, only then you want to use that. Okay, so next one that you're talking about 11 or 100, I believe that you are talking about the 111 or 110. That is, uh, uh, so the last digit 110 is used only for the GIN PFA reclass and then PFA reclass reversal in new year. Thank you. Can we download all of the questions and answers from today? We will post, uh, so we've been posting our Q and A's on ServiceNow. We'll do the same for this. They've been getting a lot of views, so very motivating for us to, um, to continue to do so. Have all of the journals been integrated that departments will need to reclass or enter as a catch-up journal? Um, so I'm not aware of any other uh, transactions that um, would need to be recorded as catch-up. Everything should be um, either uh, going outbound from fiscal to legacy or um, coming in through an interface. So yeah, I mean, yes, I think the answer is yes. <laughs> My team does not see the catch up journal voucher slash do not route to SEO checkbox being available anymore when keying a JV voucher. Please follow up. And then from earlier, Adam, I think you said it was removed. Yes, that's correct. There shouldn't be a need for for those catch-ups. Okay, thank you. And um, check service now, um, hopefully next week. And then we'll also send a communication out when we post it. All right, we'll follow up on this one. I'll also follow up on this one, but let me move it to next. Okay. <laughs> Looks like this is going to be our last question. Yep. Our department currently records unremitted cash as an accrual on a monthly basis for monthly fund reconciliation. We've been using the tenant and source. What can we use to record journals not flowing to SEO? Well, well I'm not aware of a uh, department being using it, uh, uh, accruing it monthly. So can uh, whoever asked that question, can you contact your DOF panelists and I will work with that person. Okay. All right, so this one says the catch up JV checkbox is showing only one accounting date is prior to 630. I'm not sure if that's true. I've learned not to trust the, the feedback in the comments, but if it is, then it might be only for prior. Um, we'll have to take that one away. And last question, are fetchers interfaced in GO 108 starting in March? Are we supposed to see them reversed out once the AP voucher is posted? Yes, that's correct. Okay. Thank you everybody um, for attending today. We had quite a few people online. So if you guys have any additional questions, please reach out to fiscal.cmo at fiscal.ca.gov or reach out to the FSC. We won't be able to get to this question. So I'm gonna close this. 
Um, and I want to thank everybody for the time and look forward to seeing you all either in a USL, uh, the next town hall, or in other events that we're having. Thank you.